Uh, this is Phnom Penh's number one hit music station, Radio 1 FM, on 103.7 FM. I have just been joined in the studio by my studio guests, as usual, crew Alan McCune, but joining us also is the monk. I need a monk! Brooklyn monk Antonio Gracefo. How are you doing, Cambodia? Happy to be back. He's in the house. He is in the house, and this time... Alan is back. He did actually leave last time. I did leave. There was a couple of weeks where I didn't leave the studio, but I've left the studio. I'm back. All right, we're going to be chatting a little bit. To, all right, we're going to be chatting a little bit uh, next hour about uh, MMA going on around the world, which includes what's going to be happening tomorrow morning, live on your TVs in the Octagon. I hope you guys are prepared to talk about that. I'm always prepared. I'm always prepared. <laughs> what, Wait, what UFC is that? Wait, and what are those letters? Uh, the the. Cage fighting. M M M F. That was Lily Allen. Take my place. Now, I have another Allen in the studio here with me. I will now pull my microphone around so I can talk to him face to face. And with him, the Brooklyn monk Antonio Gracefo, who likes to drop in and out of Cambodia and check out the martial arts scene from time to time. First time I met him, he was hanging out with the Cambodian legend Ape Tong. <laughs> Who are you hanging out with these days, Antonio? You know, yeah. I, I, every time I come here, I train with uh, Jap Lun with the uh, Cambodian Wrestling Association, and I've been doing that for about a year, and I really enjoy that. But uh, just recently, I've I've taken up judo just a couple of months ago, and so when I come here now, I'm also training with the Cambodian Judo Federation. Ah, Krulak Vuti, Alan's favorite Cambodian trainer. Krulak Vuti is uh, certainly one of the the guys I, I, I liked through the KWC seasons, uh, his teaching was great, and his refereeing was okay as well. Well, his refereeing wasn't bad. Um, I'd say A might have been the best referee in the KWC. He became uh, more uh, rounded as a, an MMA referee to an, an extent, and he did some good calls. Yeah. Just to let the listeners know why you might have such high regard for Lad Wuti as a, uh, an MMA trainer. He is the trainer of KWC3 champion Simbun Sron. That's correct, yes. Y your, your son from uh, another relationship? <laughs> from season one. <laughs> from season one. Antonio, she was a lovely girl. You sparred with Bun Sron a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, and at the time, he was a weedy little kid uh, who was only just into MMA. What do you think of him now? Now, he's neat, man. A lot of times when I'm over there wrestling in the morning, he comes over and watches us wrestle which I think is really interesting. And he's not just watching for fun. I mean, I think he's like trying to copy the moves and occasionally he'll come out on the mat and he'll say something to Jeff Loon like, yeah, he showed me something similar to that, you know, but never made, you know. And then I uh, went out to the, uh, to train with Lakvuti with the judo team. And it's insane. The two guys from KWC both just take insane chances with their judo. You know, the flying arm bars and like crazy, crazy rollback throws where they pull the opponent down on top of them. And they're, failing a lot of the time but you know what they're trying you know and you're never going to get there if you don't try it and yeah a year from now he's going to be scary well i was going to say people fail all the time but uh, it's only a failure if you don't get up and use the uh, experience for something else again uh alan your take on judo because you're a a, a jujitsu guy but uh judo is a thing you know quite a bit about i uh, not too much not as much as antonio now that he's training under the president of the judo federation <laughs> you said that so quietly and and, and so respectfully indeed yeah. no i was around some uh back in scotland in my country uk i was around some of the commonwealth players the some olympic players as well from japan were around and so we did a lot of uh you know randori and a lot of niwaza techniques randori being sparring and niwaza being ground fighting <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, well, Randori is more stand-up, it's more grips, more lapels, more more cuff work. And Waza is your, your Gigi Katami arm bars and, you know, different different things like that. So. Oh, and, and apparently, because we know in China, you know, I train primarily in China, and, and they refuse to use Japanese words, right? But apparently all these submissions that have English names, they have proper Japanese names, and you have to know them. You know, it's part of your belt tests, right? Mm, yeah. And I'm not learning them because I train in China, right? So it's like hilarious. Like he's like the kitchen katami. I'm like, yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the thing. Key, yeah, that thing. That On thing. the ground with the. I think we're at the sushi bar. <laughs> <laughs> we might be the way you speak Japanese. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm Scotland, so everything sounds Japanese to everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> All right, enough chat from us for the moment. Let's play some more music, and then we'll come back to. Uh, 
to check in uh, on Antonio's progress in the Cambodian scene again. But uh, first up, some Alicia Keys on 103.7 FM, or maybe you're listening in on the internet on easycom.com. I hope my mum's listening in. Hi, mum, if you are. All right, with me in the studio for the Saturday Drive Time Show, and not speaking about driving, are Alan McCune and Antonio Gracefo. Good evening. Is my Italian accent working there? Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> can, I just, can I just clarify? Is it Gracefo or Gracefo? Gracefo. Gracefo. Gracefo, yeah. See, you know, I didn't spelled know with a C-E. Clearly, it's pronounced Chefo. <laughs> Obviously, because, uh, you know, there's no H or anything in there for the... If it was an H, there. it would be K. <laughs> oh, sorry. I only speak English. I can't help you out on that one. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me for a moment there. Okay. Uh, last time we were in the studio, you were saying, Alan, that big news was going to be in the world of boxing. Uh, and it was going to be the biggest fight of all time, the one most people have ever wanted to see, even more so than the fight of the century, uh, last century. Yeah. This is confirmed? Yes, confirmed, actually confirmed by uh, Floyd Mayweather himself, that the fight that everybody wants to see, I, I'm not really bothered about it, <laughs> but the fight that everybody wants to see, the world at large want to see, is uh, Mayweather against Pacquiao. And so I believe that's confirmed for May 2nd. May 2nd, yeah. Floyd Money Mayweather versus Manuel Pac-Man Pacquiao. And yeah. now that I found out just eight minutes ago that Mayweather is American, yeah. I'm suddenly very <laughs> conflicted because <laughs> I love Pacquiao. I really want him to win, but... Who doesn't? And everybody hates Money Mayweather and wants him to lose. To, yeah. You know, I and mean, these days it does really seem to be he can sell so many fights on the basis of we all want to see him lose. No one wants to miss it. Mm. Now, 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 what's the ground fighting rule in this fight? There, I heard it's only eight seconds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I believe uh, that once you're down, you have eight seconds on the ground, and then you have to get up again. Ah, uh, that's uh, not him, man. But I can't conf cons uh, I'm sorry, I can confirm with uh, Mr. Antonio here that uh, he's from Grand Grand Rapids, Michigan, United States of America. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like, it, Grand Rapids, Michigan is about the same size as Scotland. Aye. Wait, wait. Aye. The, the town of Grand Rapids is the same time size as Scotland, or I don't Michigan know, what, is How many people they got over there in, in Scotland? Scotland? Like 20, 25? Well, you're here, that's one less. No, there's about 25, uh, 25 million people in Scotland. Is it really? Yeah. No, there's enough for two football teams and, and uh, a dozen people to have a right. Oh, well, football up. team is... is <laughs> <laughs> you get your defensive end. You get your. Oh no, not that kind of football. This is actual. This is yeah. Kick this the ball y yeah. This kind of American soccer and there's real soccer where men play. Well, we don't. There's no American soccer. Oh. <laughs> it's American football. It's American soccer to us. It's played by men <laughs> with shoulder pads. Yeah, Large, oh, man. controversial. With shoulder pads on them. Uh, you see, where I come from, we play Aussie rules football and rugby. Yes. So, and if the world cared, that would impress somebody. <laughs> Well, the world does care because the world is going to Australia to play the Rugby League World Cup. Oh, we have a World Series! Yeah, if only you play in. Only... And, we, and America's won it all but twice. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> it's, it's just amazing. All yeah, right. but anyway, get back to the, the original subject. Mayweather, Pacquiao, May 2nd. There you go. Antonio, give us your, uh, give us your pick for that one. I, you know what? I don't. I, I don't know enough about Mayweather. All I'll say is I really like Pacquiao and I want him to win. So uh, that's your question. I want Pacquiao to win. Okay, you want Pacquiao to win? I would say the best defensive boxer in the world against possibly the best offensive boxer in the world. Uh, is Money Mayweather going to be able to shut Pacquiao's style down? I guess that's what everybody's going to be talking about come this fight. I'm well, indeed, uh, but boxing, what so. is Pacquiao's style? Is he, uh, is he just walking forward all the time? He can't do that against Mayweather. Mayweather is that phenomenal counter-striker. that He did it with Hatton, uh, Ricky Hatton. Remember that fight? Hatton kept marching forward. He just, just countered him, man. Took him out. Uh, on the subject of uh, Ricky Hatton, remember that Mayweather took 10 rounds to put Ricky on the floor, and Pacquiao did it in the second. Mm, yeah. And I had to watch the replay on that a few times because I didn't see the Pacquiao's punch. punch coming.